Welcome everyone, we're back at the first Flink Forward Conference in the US. It's the Flink User Conference sponsored by Data Artisans, the uh, creators of uh, Apache Flink. Uh, we're on the ground at the Kabuki Hotel um, and we've heard some very high impact customer presentations this morning, uh, including Uber and Netflix. And we have the great honor to have um, Shawei Jag from Alibaba with us. He's uh, Senior Director of Research. And the, the, um, what's so special about having him as our guest is that they have the largest Flink cluster in operation in the world that, that we know of and that uh, the Flink folks know of as well. So welcome, Shawei. Thanks for having me. So, um, OK, so we gather you have a 1,500-node cluster running Flink. Let's sort of unpack unpack that, how you got there. Mm -hmm. What were some of the use cases that drove you in the direction of um, Flink and complementary technologies to build this? OK, yeah, I, I explain a few use cases. The first use case that prompted us to look into Flink is the classical search ETL case. We basically need to process all the data that's necessary for a search service. Um, uh, so we looked into Flink about uh, two years ago. The next case we use is uh, the A-B testing framework, which uh, is uh, used to evaluate uh, how your machine learning model works. The, um, so today we use it in a few other very interesting cases, like uh, we use it to do machine learning to adjust the ranking of search results to personalize your search results at real time to deliver the best search results for our user. We also use it to do real-time anti-fraud detection for ads. Um, so, these are the, so these are the uh, typical use case we are doing. Okay, this is very interesting because with the ads and um, and the one before that, was that, uh, uh, was it fraud? Uh, ads, ads is anti-fraud. Before that yeah. is the machine learning, real-time machine learning. So for those, low latency um, is very important. Now, help unpack that. Are you, are you doing uh, the training for these models, like in a central location, and then pushing the models out close to where they're going to be used for like the near real time decisions? Or is that all run in the same cluster? Yeah, so basically uh, we, have, uh, um, we, are, we are doing two things. We use Flink to do real-time feature update, which change the feature at real time, like uh, in a few seconds. So for example, when, when, when a user um, buy a product, the inventory needs to be updated. So such features get reflected in the ranking of search results at a near real time. We also use it to do real time training of the model itself. This becomes important in some uh, special event, for example, in, on China single stay, which is uh, the largest shopping holiday in China. Uh, it's uh, like uh, generates more revenue than uh, than Black Friday in U in United States already. On such a day, uh, because things uh, things go on sale for almost fifty percent off, the user's behavior changes a lot. So whatever model you changed before does not work reliably. Uh, so it's really nice to have a way to adjust your model at real time to deliver the best uh, to deliver the best experience to our users. All these things are actually running in the same cluster. Okay, that's really interesting. So it's like you have a multi-tenant solution that sounds like it's rather resource intensive. Yes. Um, the, when, when you're changing a feature or features in the models, um, have you, how do you go through the process of evaluating them and you know, finding out their their efficacy before mm -hmm. you put them into production. Yeah, so this is exactly the A-B testing framework I just mentioned earlier. Okay. So we also use Flink to collect the metrics, the performance of these models at real time. And uh, use uh, and we, once these data are processed, we publish it into our OLAP system so we can see the performance uh, of the models at real time. Okay, very, very impressive. Mm -hmm. So now, um, so explain perhaps 
why Flink was appropriate for those use cases? Is it because you really needed super low latency or that you wanted a less resource intensive mm -hmm. um, sort of streaming engine mm -hmm. to support these? Um, what, where did it, what made it the right, uh, fit that right sweet spot? Yeah, so um, Search has lots of different products and they have lots of different uh, data processing needs. So when we looked into all these needs, we quickly realized we actually need a, a computer engine that can, can do both uh, batch processing and streaming processing. And in terms of streaming processing, we have a few needs. For example, we, we really need super low latency. So in some cases, for example, if a product is sold out and you still display it in, in your search results, when you just click and try to buy, they cannot buy it. It's a bad experience. So the sooner you can get uh, the data process, the better. So with so, so, so near real time for you means how many how many milliseconds does the... Um, the it's usually like a second. One, one second, something like that. But the, that's one second end to end, talking to inventory. That's right. and, how much time would the model itself have? To oh, it's uh, it's very short. It's uh, yeah. In the single digit milliseconds. Yeah. Um, it's probably longer than. There are some scenarios that require single digit milliseconds. That's a security scenario. That's yeah. something we are currently looking looking into. So uh, when you do transactions uh, in our in our site, we need to de detect if it's a flawed transaction. Uh, we want to be able to block such transactions at real time. For that for that to happen, we really need a latency that's below 10 milliseconds. So when we're looking at the computer engines, this is also one of our our uh, one of the requirements we were thinking about. So we really need a computer engine which is able to deliver sub-second latency if necessary. And at the same time, can also do batch efficiently. So we, we are looking for a solution that can cover all the computation needs. So one way of looking at it is many, many vendors and customers talk about elasticity as in the size of the cluster. Mm -hmm. But you're talking about elasticity or scaling in terms of latency. Yes. In latency and the way of doing computation. So you can view like uh, uh, the security scenario as uh, super, uh, uh, super restrict on the latency requirement, but uh, view the batch as the most, most relaxed version of latency requirement. Right? We want the full spectrum, a support of the full spectrum. It's possible that you can use different uh, engines to do uh, for each scenario, but which means uh, uh, you, you are required to maintain uh, more diff uh, more code bases, which yes. which can be a headache, and we believe uh, it's possible to have a single solution that works for all these use cases. So okay, last question. Help us understand um, for mainstream customers who don't hire the top PhDs out of the Chinese universities, um, but who have skilled you know data scientists, but not an unending yeah. supply and aspire to build solutions like this. Mm -hmm. Tell us some of the trade-offs they should consider given that you know, the skill set um, and the bench strength is very deep at Alibaba mm -hmm. and that's perhaps not as widely disseminated or dispersed within a mainstream enterprise. Mm -hmm. How should they think about the trade-offs in terms of the building blocks for this type of system? Yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, so we actually thought about this. So initially, what we did is we were using uh, uh, data set and data string API, which is a relatively lower level API. Uh, so to develop an application with this is, uh, is, uh, is reasonable, but uh, it still requires some skill. So, uh, it's, uh, uh, so, we, so we want a way to make it even simpler for, uh, for example, to make it possible for data scientists to do this. Uh, so in the last uh, half a year, uh, we spent a lot of time working on table API and the SQL support, which basically tries to uh, describe your computation logic or data processing logic using SQL. SQL is uh, used widely uh, so uh, a lot of people have experienced it. So we are hoping with this approach, we, it will greatly lower the threshold for people to use Flink. Yet uh, at the same time, the SQL is uh, also a nice way to unify the streaming processing and the batch processing. With SQL, you only need to write your process logic once. It will, it can, uh, you can run it in different modes. So, okay, this is interesting because some of the 
um, Flink folks say, you know, uh, structured streaming, which is a table uh, construct with data frames in Spark, is not a natural way to think about streaming, and yet, um, and yet both the, the the Spark guys say, hey, that's you know what everyone's comfortable with. We'll live with uh, probabilistic answers instead of deterministic answers because we might have late arrivals and um, in the data. But it sounds like there's a, a feeling in the Flink community that you really do want to work with tables despite their shortcomings because so many people understand them. Mm -hmm. uh, so ease of, ease of use is definitely one of the strengths of SQL. Another strength of SQL is uh, the description. It's, uh, it's very descriptive. It doesn't ex it doesn't, uh, the user doesn't need to say exactly how you do the computation, but it just tells you what, what I want to get. Uh, this gives the framework a lot of freedom in optimization. Uh, so users don't need to worry about the uh, hard details to optimize their code. It let the system do its work. At the same time, uh, I think the deterministic things can be achieved in SQL. It just means the framework needs to handle that event, such kind of things correctly in, the, in, the, uh, in its implementation of SQL. Okay. You, you don't, when using SQL, you are not really sacrificing such deterministicism. Okay, this is, we'll have to save this for a follow-up conversation because mm -hmm. there's more to unpack there. But uh, um, Xiaowei, Jack, thank you very much for joining us and imparting some of the wisdom from Alibaba. We are on the ground at Flink Forward, the Data Artisans Conference for the Flink community at the Kabuki Hotel in San Francisco, and we'll be right back. <laughs>